alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Before we begin Surah al uh, today marks the six months of the departure of an honorable lady. Uh, her family are with us, Haj Roshan Ali Daya and uh, Murtaza and Muhammad and others and Tanweer. So please join me in remembering Marhuma Haj Khanum Mumtaz Daya in reciting Surah Al Fatiha for her soul. Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. Surah Al Ra'd, verses 37 and 38, inshallah. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Was salatu was salamu ala anbiya illahi jami'an wa ala sayyidihim wa khatamihim habibi illahi al alameen abil qasim al Mustafa Muhammad. وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وكذلك أنزلناه حكما عربيا وكذلك أنزلناه حكما عربيا ولئن اتبعت أهواءهم وَلَئِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ بَعْدَ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا لقد أرسلنا رسلا من قبلك وجعلنا لهم أزواجا وذرية وما كان لرسول أن يأتي بآية إلا بإذن الله وما كان لرسول ان ياتي بايه الا باذن الله الا باذن الله لكل اجل كتاب يمحو الله ما يشاء ويثبت وعنده أم الكتاب صدق الله العلي العظيم وكذلك Thus, we revealed and we sent this book as an Arabic judgment. What does Arabic judgment mean? Does it mean Arabic language? If it is Arabic language, Arabic judgment, then how does it work for the universal community? How can we say Islam is a universal religion? Arabic judgment in this context, hukman Arabian, it means eloquent and simple and easy, easy to digest, very plain and very clear. 
And this is not the only time the Holy Quran refers to the clear and simple and a plain statement as being Arabic. This is not the only time. In Surah Al-Zumr, again, God wants to say that this book is very simple, very clear, doesn't have any sophistication or any, let's say, complication in understanding it. Doesn't have complication. If you study the Quran, if you focus, if you delve deep into the verses, you understand the meaning. Maybe a few verses here or there requires an extra effort. But if we pay attention, we will understand the Quran. So there is no complication in understanding the verse. There is no mysteries there. Al-Quran yufassiru ba'dhu ba'dha. If you don't understand one verse, if you don't understand this term here, the other verse, other chapter is going to come and explain it to you, unfold the meaning, make it clear to you. Part of the Quran explains the other part. You don't have to go outside the Quran. So in Surah Al-Zumur, God says, Quranan Arabiyan ghayra dhi iwajin. We sent you a book, Arabi. Arabi means simple and easy and plain. Ghayra dhi iwaj. Does not have any crookedness. Does not have any ambiguities. No, ghayra dhi iwaj. Iwaj. Iwaj means crookedness. Not ha, nothing about Hillary Clinton, ha, nothing to do at all. Ghayra di Iwajin, it means this book is very simple. And this is the meaning. Wakadalika and Zalnahu Hukman Arabian. Wailin Tabata Ahwaahu. Because at the end of the day, God wants you to understand the book. And the Mubalagh. God is Mubalagh himself. God says, Wa alayn al balagh The first Mubalagh in this universe is God. The first preacher in this universe is God himself. So when God wants to explain himself, he must send us a statement which is fathomable, which is easy to understand. If his statement is too complicated, people are not going to enjoy it. He didn't make it too complicated for us. But we need, we need to study, of course. We need definitely to spend some time to study the Quranic literature, the Quranic sciences, so we understand the language of the Quran. The language of the Quran, by the way, even some Arabs, if they don't study it, they don't understand it. Even some Arabs, if they are not familiar with the Quranic literature, they are not going to understand it. So we must spend some time. So God is trying to say that a preacher must be able to explain and simplify his statements to the people. Some preachers, when they complicate things, people don't enjoy them. Maybe they are very scholars. They are very well versed, but they don't know how to bring you the idea. They don't know how to bring you the idea. They complicate things. They, they don't make it simple. God says, when you have a message to deliver, make it simple for people to get it, to absorb it, to understand it, to enjoy it. And this is why for every messenger, there is a prophet who speaks their language. God says in the book, every community, we send them a messenger of their own who speaks the language. Because if he doesn't speak the language, he cannot deliver his message. And it happened that this book came in Mecca. And the language of people at that time was Arabic language. وَكَذَلِكَ أَنزَلْنَاهُ حُكْمًا عَرَبِيًّا So Arabian here does not mean necessarily Arabic language. It means a simple language, a plain language. حُكْمًا عَرَبِيًّا وَلَئِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ بَعْدَمَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ If yet 
If you follow the desire of the people, the whim of the people who surround you. Many people used to come to the Prophet, Muslims and non-Muslims. Muslims and non-Muslims. And they would tell him, why don't you change the ruling? This ruling does not work for us. Doesn't work for my wife. Doesn't work for my family. Doesn't work for my neighborhood. Why don't you change it? Switch this ruling from this into that. God is saying to the Prophet, if you decide, he's speaking to the Prophet. He is speaking to us through the Prophet. This message is for us, for us, the people, but through the Prophet. God says to him, if yet, if you decide to follow their whims, their worldly desires, after knowing what is right and what is wrong, we gave you, we sent you the, the message, we told you what is right and what is wrong. If after that you want to follow their whims, you don't follow God, what is the result? You would not. You shall have no supporters. Wali is supporter or guardian. Wali. Everybody knows. Wali is a supporter or guardian. God says, you are not going to have any support from God. Any support against God. We are not going to support you. Malaka min Allahi min wali. The second term, neither waq. Waq comes from what? Huh? From wiqaya. Wiqaya is what? Protection. So God neither is going to support you, nor he's going to defend you or protect you. You will be left alone. Those who do not like what God sends to us and they follow their whims. Now, do we have this example now at this time? People who don't refuse what God says and they want to follow their own whims? Do we have this or this is only an old story, 1400 years old? We have it in every age. In every time, in every community, in every household. We have people who would like Islam to be a tailor-made, tailor-made for their own needs, for their own interests. If Islam works for them, they welcome it. If Islam says, no, this is illegal, don't do it. They don't like it, they reject it. You know, when the Prophet started preaching his message, a major tribe in Arabia by the name of Thaqif, Thaqif, major tribe, came to the Prophet. They said to him, Ya Muhammad, we are willing to accept what you say. And we are willing to convert to Islam. And we have about 10,000 fighters and soldiers. They're going to support you. You need support, right? You are asking for support and help. We are ready to help you. We are ready to send our young ones, young men, to protect you. Ten, 10,000 fighters, but with one, one condition. The Prophet said, what is the condition? They said, the Khilafah after you, when you die as a Prophet, your successor has to be from us, our tribe, the tribe of Thaqif. So we lead the Ummah, we lead the community after you. And taj'ala al-Khilafah tafina. Provided that, the Khilafah, the leadership of the Muslim Ummah is one of us. The Prophet said, I can't decide this. This is not up to me. This is not up to me. God chooses whoever he wants to choose for this leadership post. It's not me. So they refuse to accept him as a prophet. Why? Because it does not work for their own interests. Many others came to the prophet when he was in Medina. They said to him, Change this law. We don't like it. Bring another book. The book that you have, it doesn't work for us. It doesn't serve our political or economic or social interests. We don't like this book. But Dil, exchange it. Ask your Lord to send you another book. The Prophet answered them very simply. He said, It's not up to me to change the book. I can't. This is revelation from God. 
I can't tamper with it. Today, my friends, many people don't like religion. You know why? Not because religion is burdensome for them. No. But because it does not serve their own interests. Doesn't serve. Period. Doesn't serve their own interests. They don't like it. They don't like religion. Because religion says usury, usury riba is forbidden. Yamhukullahu riba wa yurbi sadaqat. God says if you give loan, don't take interest. Try to help people, not to. Today you go and take $10,000 loan here from any financial institution in America. How much they charge you? When you return this 10,000, you have to return another 20,000 with it as an interest. You borrowed only 10,000. Is this help? This is not help. They are destroying you, taking advantage of you. God says, don't do this. So some people don't like religion because of usury. Some people I know, they were arguing with me. They don't like religion because why wine is forbidden. I like wine. I can't give up on wine. Why alcohol? Alcohol is good. Wine is good for your heart, for your health. Why? I can't stop this. There was someone during the time of the prophet. They kept telling him, don't to drink. He is famous. If you check the history, they mention his name. But he said, I can't. I was raised with this. It's part of me. It's like smoking for some people. I can't give up on it. So the first verse came that the disadvantages of alcohol outweighs their advantages. And an advantage here does not mean health-wise. Economic. Because wine at that time like was like tea today. You cannot ban tea altogether. In some societies, if you ban tea, you know, you're going to destroy the society. They don't listen to you. So you have to do it, you know, slowly, slowly. So God came and he said, hmm? The the, the, the the wrong, the hurt, the loss of wine, of alcohol, outweighs the benefit. Means the economic benefit. And then, لا تقربوا الصلاة وأنتم سكارى. They came to him, they said, God says, don't approach the prayers. Don't go to the prayers. Five daily prayers while you are drunk. He said, no, this is not enough. I can't give up. And, the, and then God came with the third powerful statement. إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ وَالْأَنْصَابُ رِجْسٌ مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ Very simple. Rich. Abomination. Rich. Wine is rich. Abomination. فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ is chew it. Stay away from it. Don't drink it. Don't get close to it. فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ اجْتِنَاب. اجْتِنَاب. Arabic and Farsi. People know the meaning of اجْتِنَاب. اجْتِنَاب means to stay away. It's chew it. So they came to him, they said, look, look at this powerful statement. At that time, he said three times, intahayna, intahayna, intahayna. Okay, now, because this is powerful statement, I can't go against it. For some people, my friend, religion is a business, believe me. Business. They make a profit out of it. Profit. They make money. The day they lose money, they are not religious anymore. So God is saying to the Prophet, وَلَئِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ بَعْدَ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ Be careful, Ya Rasulullah. Don't listen to them. They're going to put pressure on you. They're going to intimidate you every single day. They come up with the new demands. Cancel this. Okay? Remove this. Make this halal. Make that haram. You can't listen to them. You can't listen to their whims, to their desires. You have to listen to me. And then we go to number 38. Verily, we sent messengers before you. We ordained for them azwajan, spouses, wives, and a progeny. 
why God says we ordained for the prophets and messengers, families, children, wives. It's not appropriate for the messenger to be single. Maybe we have some exceptions here or there, because for every rule, there is an exception. Two prophets remain single, Yahya and Isa, for some reasons, for some reasons. God knows what was the reason, because Isa left at the age of 33. Isa, who has no children, people started to worship him. Imagine if he leaves behind children, definitely people are going to worship his children, okay? So those are exceptions, but the vast majority, 99.9% .9 of messengers, apostles, and prophets are married. Why? Because God says, if you don't practice your tolerance, your patience, your understanding, your mercy, your love at home, you are most likely to fail practicing it outside the home, in the community. We want the prophet first to practice his patience, his da'wah, his invitation, his good manners at home with his wife, with his children. Because family is a challenge, my friends. Family is a big challenge. Raising children is not easy. Probably the most difficult task today in the whole world is to raise one child. You can send a rocket to the moon, it's much easier. They're raising a single child today in America, in Europe, everywhere. Because it's not only about food. It's about education. It's about manners, ta'aleem, akhlaq. You produce children with a strong, strong personality, Islamic personality, moral personality. This is not easy. It's not easy at all. So the Prophet has to practice these things at home first before he goes outside. So God says, you must have wife and children. You must. Because if you don't have wife and children, you don't know what you are talking about. You don't know. You don't know the challenges that are involved in raising people. You don't know. So once you are successful in raising your children, then you can raise others. And you know, some people were not, some prophets were not even successful in raising their families. Which example? Give me an example which is mentioned in this book. نوح ضرب الله مثلا للذين كفروا امرأة نوح وامرأة لوط كانت تحت عبدين من عبادنا their husbands are good they were patient with them they were teaching them educating them being tolerant with them فخانتهما they betrayed the message they didn't follow because where they were fascinated with the dunya not the akhir فَخَانَتَاهُمَا فَلَمْ يُغْنِيَا عَنْهُمَا مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَقِيلَتْ خُلَ النَّارَ مَعَ الدَّاخِرِينَ I gave only two examples. We have more, more. I don't want to go into politics. We have many more examples. Okay? So they could not. Some of them could not raise their children. Well, the son of Nuh ran away from the family at the age of 450 years. Now, I've seen some kids who are five years old. They run away, no problem. But someone who's 450 years and he runs away, and the father is 1,700 years running after him. 1,700 years. They have to have families. They have to have families to know the challenges of raising children. Because another reason why they have to have families because the prophet, the messenger, the imam, his answers have to be realistic, not idealistic. Sometimes, my friends, we, we, when I say we, the preachers, the imams, they ask us questions, we give them difficult answers. We make religion difficult for them. We make life difficult for them. Okay? The other day, a lady came back from Hajj. You know, to go to Hajj, you have to save money probably for a few years in this country. Hajj is very costly. And you have to take a flight, 18 hours to get there. So she made a simple mistake. She goes to a scholar and the scholar says, her, you have to go back next year and repeat your Hajj. 
This is not, this is not realistic answer. This is not an answer that makes life easy for people. God says about religion, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ وَعِيفَ God intends through religion to make life easy for you, not difficult. Not difficult. So, the preacher, the prophet, ha has to be a father to know the challenges that involves. Not to give answers, you know, utopian answers. We don't live in paradise, we live on earth. We live here on the surface of earth. So we need answers that are practical. Practical, not idealistic. Not idealistic, practical. Someone was living in, in, uh, in, um, in one of these uh, Baltic countries, Sweden, Sweden, northern Sweden. He asked a sheikh, he said to him, sunset here, sunset here is at 11 in the summertime, 11 p.m. sunset. And we are fasting. So what is the solution? You know what the sheikh told him? Very practical solution. He said to him, go back home to Afghanistan. Why are you sitting in Sweden? And of course the sheikh is living here. Huh? He's not going back to his own country. This is not a practical. Or someone, another sheikh was asked from a different school of thought by young people. They said to him, we have urges, you know. Desires, urges. We go to school. School is mixed. So what do you suggest? He said, I suggest that you fast. So the guy told him, how many days? He said, 365 days a year. This is not a practical. This is not an answer. This is a joke. This is a joke. Who can fast 600 and 300, uh, how, many, how many days? 365 days? Nobody can fast. The answers have to be practical, realistic. Realistic answers that people can practice them. And then the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كَانَ لِرَسُولٍ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ And it is not for a messenger, any messenger, any prophet, أَنْ يَأْتِيَ بِآيَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ They come to the prophet every now and then, can you break the sky, can you, you know, sh cut the earth to pieces, can you bring the moon down, can you take the sun to God says, we don't give him permission to do this. If you don't want to believe, don't believe. Don't ask him things that are not realistic. Save with God's leave. Those prophets, they cannot perform miracles. Save, accept with God's permission and leave. And I said many times, my friends, the difference between Iman and Kufr. The difference between monotheism, believing in God, or rejecting God, associating with God, shirk, or heresy, is this verse. Min dunillah is shirk, bi'idhnillah is faith, iman. Some people say you go and ask Imam Hussein, Ya Hussein, this is shirk, this is heresy. This is what they tell you. We tell them, no, this is bi'idhnillah. I'm asking Imam Hussein bi'idhnillah. It's in the Quran, in this book. This is, the, this is one of the verses. We have many of them. This is one of them. Surah al verse 38. God says, I give them permission bi'idhnillah. So it is okay to ask him. Because Imam Hussein is the agent of God. He's not acting independently from God. He's not acting independently. He works for God. So when you say, Ya Hussein, as if you are saying, Ya Allah, is your gate to Allah. The children of Ya'qub, قالوا Ya Abana, استغفر لنا ذنوبنا. When they committed sin, they came to the Father. God is there. God is closer to them than their father. And God can hear. God would listen. But they didn't go to God. They came through the gate of their father, Ya'qub. Ya Abana, استغفر لنا ذنوبنا. You, you go to God and ask. This is what we do. We go to Imam Hussein, so he would ask. He will ask God on our behalf. So this is bi'idhnillah, and this is monotheism. Monotheism. This is tawheed. 
When you ask someone without God's permission, min dunillah, this is heresy. This is disbelief. This is shirk. So there is a very delicate difference between iman, faith, on the one hand, and disbelief, shirk, on the other hand. We have to remember always. Shirk, min dunillah. Iman, bi idnillah. Wa ma kana li rasulin an yatiya bi ayatin illa bi idnillah. For every term, there is a book, there is a fixed time. What does that mean? It has two meanings. Some people would say, they would wonder why people reject God, reject the invitations of their prophets, and yet God is patient with them. He doesn't destroy them. Don't we say this every day? Why such and such and such, such government, such country, such king, such president, they commit mischief, injustice, oppression, aggression, war, bombing, and God doesn't say anything. People ask, where is God? Where is justice? God is answering in one sentence. He answers in one sentence. For every president, every king, every tyrant, there is a fixed time which will arrive will arrive. God made booking for them. It's like the trial here. If you have a problem in the court, you can just walk in. Huh? You can walk into the court and say, where is the judge? Maybe 2,000 years ago, yes. But not now. You have to get an appointment. God says for all those tyrants, there is an appointment. This is the meaning of this verse. For every person who commits mischief, there is a day of justice. And they will see the result of their aggressions. Allahumma khfar lil mu'minin wal mu'minat. Wal muslimin wal muslimat. Al ahya'i minhum wal amwat. Tabi' allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat. Innaka mujibu al-da'wat. Inshallah. Salatul Jum'ah tomorrow at 1. And the program for the Arba'een of Imam Hussein is going to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, October 17th, 18th, and 19th, inshallah. Because the day of Arba'een in America is going to be the 19th. In Iraq, it's going to be October 20th. Here in this country, we're going to see the moon of Safar, inshallah, here in California. So Saturday... October 19th is the day of Arba'een here, inshallah. Allahumma ajjil fi faraj sayyidina wa maulana sahib al-asri wa al-zaman ila arwah al-mu'mina wa al-mu'minat wa ila ruh al-marhuma al-hajja mumtaz daya thawab al-fatiha ma'a salati ala muhammadin wa ali muhammadin.